Hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, raster to vector conversions in Release 9. We're going to take a look at the new uh, tracing capabilities. And uh, what tracing is all about is if you have a raster like the one we're looking at right here, which is a, a raster is an image, it's full of pixels. And uh, in this particular case we're looking at the grid cell land use and land cover raster for uh, a region uh, that is uh, near San Jose, California. Uh, and uh, what uh, the tracing does is it takes every region where, if we zoom in here, we take a closer look, every region where there are light-colored pixels, it creates a vector object in new drawing uh, that's an area. So the idea is we're converting a raster here, uh, collections of pixels, into vector objects that is an area that covers where all, say, this green color might cover. And uh, to do that is uh, very simple in Release 9. It's using the new capability. Temporarily, I'm going to turn off the uh, Google layer here. I'll put the focus on the... Uh, land use and land cover raster layer. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see closer what we're doing. Let's zoom all the way into about that. And uh, with the focus on this layer, I'm going to choose the, in the contents pane the transform panel, our friend the transform panel. And here I'm looking for the uh, trace areas template. The trace areas template en encapsulates in a point and click template uh, a rather, well it's not particularly complicated SQL that uses the SQL functions for tracing. Uh, we don't know anything about, need to know anything about that to use this. The similarity uh, value here says how close should the pixels be to each other uh, before uh, it considers them uh, part of the same area. So if we increase it up to about area, uh, about 20, let's make it about 50. You see that creates considerably fewer areas. And as we change that, because uh, Manifold is so fast, Release 9 is so incredibly fast, that actually previews what the result is of that tracing area thing. Uh, we're going to leave it at a similarity of zero, so it'll, it'll, it will attempt to create a separate area for each place where the pixels are pretty much the same with little or no difference between them. To actually create that area, th those areas, we're going to create a new drawing. We're going to click the Add Component button, and it's done. This is such a small data set that everything happens instantly, but even with larger data sets, it's remarkably quick. If we take a look here at the project, what have we created? We've created a, a, a new drawing with a new, with a new drawings table. And uh, if we look at what the uh, table is, the grid cell trace areas table, uh, let's open that. And I'll uh, undock it so we can move it around. We can see that it's created uh, a bunch of areas with a value for each area, the value taken from the pixel values. And uh, I'm going to drag and drop this, the drawing that was created here into the uh, map. Uh, and uh, as you can see from, from this, it's... Uh, uh, it's created areas using the default formatting for what it predicted it would do using the preview. Uh, our first step here is we're going to color these to make them uh, more interesting. So I'm going to click here in the contents pane, and I'm going to choose style. Um, first, I'm gonna, first, I'm going to uh, put the uh, focus back on that layer. And in the contents pane, I'm going to choose style. And here I will change the fill color for those areas using value. The that's the value right here. And what I want to do is I want to collect all my uh, all the uh, unique values that are in here. And there's, there aren't a whole lot of them. There's only a few of them. And I'll, I'll use a palette, the color, one of the color brewer, brewer pa color brewer palettes. And I think we'll use the paired palette, which looks pretty cool. Click Update Style. And we've just colored each of those areas uh, in a different way. Uh, let's uh, zoom back out here a bit so we can uh, see what that looks like. And I'm going to leave this over here on this side. Now, uh, all that is great, and uh, we've actually accomplished our job. We've done what we, what we set out to do. We've uh, uh, created uh, areas for each all these places where there are like pixels, and uh, we have a table that has the value for each one of them, uh, which is cool. And uh, basically, here we're done. However, uh, we could take it one more step further. And uh, what we could do, which would be more interesting, I think, would be to take advantage of uh, this table that we have here and in the project pane. You can see that it's uh, right here. It's the LULC classes. And what this is, this is a table uh, that we've made up from the uh, documentation that USGS publishes, uh, which reveals what all these different value codes are supposed to mean. So, for example, we know that uh, uh, any place that has a value code of about, um, okay, let's click on that and move it. Any code that has a value code of about 22 is orchards, groves, vineyards, and nurseries. So uh, any... Uh, uh, area here that has a value code of 22. We know that represents a, a region where there's uh, orchards, groves, vin vineyards, and nurseries. 
Now what we would love to do, which would be really cool, would be to take this table here that's uh, LULC classes, and we'd like to uh, uh, form a relation with this table here. So we would like to add to this grid cells, tiles, trace areas table another column called code where these things are automatically correlated. So that what's 11 here would automatically get a code here of uh, 11 or residential as well. Doing that is very easy, and we have here a query called update with class codes that we've previously written uh, that uh, Manifold thoughtfully provides in this uh, uh, sample uh, project that uh, you too can use at home to uh, add such uh, values. It's, it, shows, it shows it illustrates basically how to add in SQL using SQL using a simple update query uh, the these uh, these values here, and that uses uh, what's known as an inner join. An inner join sometimes is called a relation in simpler. Uh, uh, facilities, for example, manifold release eight. You know, there's a facility called uh, Relations that sort of uh, automated this, but we're going to use the inner join here. And let's take a look at what this query does. Uh, the first thing it does is it alters this table that's, that was created to uh, add an index on the value because we need to add an index on the value. And it adds a field called code, just like this one. So there's going to be a new field called code. Uh, if we like, we can run this uh, either all at once by right clicking on this query and choosing run. Or if we like to get it, kind of get take advantage of the learning opportunity here, uh, we can run it from the within the command pane by highlighting that, and then clicking Alt Enter. So it just ran, and what did it do? We only ran the highlighted portion of it with Alt Enter. Uh, what we did is we uh, first we created an index on this value field. That's that's part of the table schema right now. If we opened up the uh, table schema, well, let's do that. Edit uh, schema we can see that it now has an index called value. That's a B-tree index. Uh, and it also added this field called code. Now what we want to do is we want to populate this field called code uh, with uh, using inner join to bring in values from uh, the LULC classes. So we're actually, so, so it'll automatically look up the value here and wherever the value here is the same as the value here, it's going to pick up that uh, code value and put it in here. And to do that, we use this, this part of the query here. That's an update query. Uh, this is a little bit intricate, and uh, it uses some, uh, as we say, or as they say in the United States, uh, inside baseball, uh, and, and that it, it uses a few tricks. So, for example, we use aliasing here. So instead of writing out these really long table names like grid cell tiles trace areas, which takes forever to write, we use an alias. And uh, so uh, here we are aliasing this name to uh, just the letter A, because keyboarding the letter A is way shorter than keyboarding this whole mess here. And instead of using this long table name, LULC classes there, we're going to alias it and as, as, as the letter C. And uh, what's cool about how Manifold uh, interprets uh, and operates with queries is if uh, this aliasing is part of the, uh, uh, part of the select uh, in a query, uh, we can use that alias even in places like right up here, even before the aliasing was uh, declared in terms of using the, you know, the word keyword as. So select grid cells trace tiles trace areas dot mfdid so that's this field right here and select uh, the, this code as a code and here we're also aliasing to keep it short and c code as, uh, as as c code from this table keep it short from this table inner join on the this table and we want to inner join where the two values are the same so every place where this is eleven and that's eleven it's going to look up what this is here. Uh, the code and it's going to set the code for the big table here to that. So let's run that query and you'll see like magic that it works. We highlight it and click uh, Alt Enter and it's done. So let us uh, close this table here. Let's close the query there and let's take a look at what we've uh, accomplished here. Uh, what we've done is uh, we've added these fields to the table that powers the drawing. So now whenever we uh, select uh, objects here in the drawing with an within alt click or whatever, uh, it will automatically report these values as well. So let's try a few of these and see what happens. I'm going to move this out of the way. And here in the drawing, let's uh, alt click this guy here and let's see what that is. When you alt click something like this uh, in uh, release 9, it automatically pops up in the record pane set to the values tab so you can see the values. So we see that for this particular area, uh, it has a value of 42, and the code is Evergreen Forest Land. Well, that makes sense, because that's, that's a very evergreen forest area there. And here it's Mixed Forest Land. Let's, let's turn the 
G Street's back on. This here right here is a uh, Highway 152, I believe, which is the uh, goes through the Pacheco Pass from the uh, Santa Clara Valley area, the Silicon Valley area, over to the Central Valley of California. It goes right past these two lakes. And if you know that region, you know that right here there is evergreen forest land. And you know that this bit right here, let's select that, is indeed a reservoir. That's a big reservoir. And right around here, if, I'm, if I recall correctly, is Dinosaur Point. That's where uh, the one lone dinosaur fossil ever found in California was found. Uh, let's zoom in here closer to San Jose, to the main part of San Jose, and let's see what it reports here. If we click on this light blue area, we see that's residential. If we click on the uh, darker blue, we see that's commercial services. If we click on uh, the light green, we see that's industrial commercial. The surprising thing is that here in Silicon Valley, there isn't a whole lot of uh, industrial and commercial action going on. A lot of it is mostly residential, and some of it, believe it or not, is still cropland and pasture. Anyway, we've taken a look at how to uh, uh, create uh, vector objects from uh, rasters. We do that using the uh, unbelievably easy-to-use uh, transform uh, template here called Trace Areas. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's really hard to mess that up. It's, such, it's so easy to use. Uh, and uh, then we've gone beyond that. Most of what we've actually done here in this video is we've uh, seen how we can... Uh, uh, use interjoin to uh, connect uh, values from uh, a lookup table to the uh, resulting areas that uh, we created in the uh, vector drawing that uh, we created, which is this guy right here, the drawing. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And goodbye from Manifold Release 9 land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, Manifold.net. See you soon.